Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, this, uh, we are actually, this, this is the lesson on topic nine, uh, part one for binomial theorem. Okay, so congratulations, you have made it to topic nine. Okay, I want to uh, just go through with you a very quick video uh, on the part one, okay, which is on the factorial notation as well as the n choose r notation. Okay, so uh, what does it mean? Okay, basically, the whole idea of this uh, lesson basically uh, is on. Um, Binomial theorem. Okay, and what's a binomial theorem? Binomial, yes, you the word bi stands for two. Okay, so when we talk about binomial, it's like two, two terms, huh? Okay, oh, so two terms. So basically, we are looking at terms where you have something like a plus b to the power of n. Okay, and we actually uh, conduct the binomial theorem to, to use binomial theorem to conduct a binomial expansion uh, for terms like that. Okay, so for by the end of this lesson, or this this uh, whole three part series, right? You are able to see that, for example, if I were to give you something like this, I say three plus two uh, x, uh, to the power of five, you will expand this without any sweat. Okay, oh? as of now, if you expand this, you will find it quite uh, tiring, like, Okay, but uh, end of the three three lessons, you will be able to do it very very comfortably. Okay, so let's look forward to that. Uh, but before we do that. Uh, I have to introduce you to a few uh, terms or terminology first. Okay, uh, the first one is what we call the factorial notation, which is the purpose of this lesson. Okay, mm. so what is the factorial notation and what is the, uh, we call this n, n choose r, uh, the n choose r notation. How do you understand this? Okay, that's the objective of my lesson today. Okay, I'll also go through something called the n factor. This one is not an exclamation mark, uh, so you don't have to shout n. Okay, so basically this is n factorial. You see the exclamation mark of the term here. We call this n factorial. Okay. Uh, so I read it as n factorial. Okay. Uh, why is it called factorial? Because you will see that it can be broken down into uh, factors. That's why it's called factorial. And this is basically, you can read this as n choose r. Okay. What does n choose r mean? Uh, just hold on. I'll go, that, uh, go into that in the later part of the video. Okay, so the next portion, okay, why, why is there a motivation for binomial? Why do we need to learn binomial? So uh, you can see, it, it, very, very simple. Today, if I give you this a plus b power 2, right? So if I ask you to expand this, right, you'll find uh, it's very easy. Right? Okay, so you just take a square plus 2ab plus b square. Okay, not? okay but uh, if I ask you to do a plus b power 3, uh, maybe you still can. Uh, a, b, a plus b power 3, maybe you still can do it. Okay, but what if I ask you to do something like a plus b power 4, uh, a plus b power 5, a plus b power 10. Well, you will do until you want to die, right? right now. So how do we perform this expansion easily? So that's why uh, I can show you a pattern. Okay, the pattern is something about what we call the Pascal's triangle. I don't know if you heard of this. If you read of this, good for you. You are well read. And if not, let me show you something uh, interesting. Okay, so if you look at a plus b power n, uh, let's say if I uh, put n as 0, we need this part something like just uh, a plus b power zero. Then it's very trivial. It's just uh, anything to the power of zero, just one now. So all you get is just a, a coefficient one. Okay. But if I put something like uh, a plus b power one, okay, yeah, because you can see that I put my n, I put my n as one, I put my n as one. Then you can see that uh, the coefficient I have here for a uh, is one, the coefficient I have for b is also one. Okay. So it's uh, like one and then one and one. Okay. Uh, if I put to power two, power two, then you can see that I get uh, one for the coefficient for a square is one. The coefficient for a, b is two. And the coefficient for uh, b square is also one. Okay. So I just want you to look at these numbers. One, 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 followed by one, two, one. Okay. Uh, so look at how interesting this is. Okay. And if I go to power three, you will see that it is one. Okay, let me just put one. Uh. A cube is one times A cube. Uh. So, so by default, the coefficient is uh, one. Uh. Okay, you will see the coefficients one, three, three, one. Okay, or like by 4D. Okay, so you can see these numbers that I highlight in red. Uh, how are they related? Uh, the nice thing is this. Basically, right, if you look at two, right, okay, and you look, uh, for example, if you look at the number two, and if you look upwards uh, at the 11 o'clock, at two o'clock direction, uh, basically uh, one plus one will give you two. Okay, so it's some sort of like a triangle uh, 
summation and okay, so you can see it's like a triangle. Okay, one plus one will give you two. At the same time, uh, you think about it, can you get this uh use this to build our future terms? Huh? So you see, what does two plus one give you? Two plus one actually can give you three. So you can see another triangle here. One plus two will give you three as well. So isn't it nice? Can you see? Ah, uh, basically the, the, the terms that are inside, okay, uh, uh, actually you can actually add the previous two terms on top in the 11 and 2 o'clock direction. Uh. 11 o'clock, 2 o'clock direction, 1 and 2. And they give you the number here. 2, 1 give you 3. 2 plus 1 give you 3. 3 plus 1 give you 4. Right? You can see another 2. 3 plus 3 give you 6. 1 plus 3 give you 4. And then you actually just add. You can see that from 1 become 2, become 3, become 4. 5 terms, here I have 6 terms. And you can see that this relationship will continue. Okay? If I have 1 plus 3, it gives me 4. If I have 3 plus 3, it gives me 6. If I have 3 plus 1, it gives me 4. Beautiful, right? So this is what we call the Pascal's triangle. Okay? Huh? So you can see that easily, uh, the, this is a plus b power 1. This is a plus b power 2. This is a plus b power 3. This is a plus b power 4. And, and this is a plus b power 5. Uh. Okay? Huh? And you can see the coefficient is very nice. Right? 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. Okay? So let's see if I ask you uh, today, uh, can you give me the coefficient for a plus b power 6? Yeah, actually quite easy, right? So I mean, you just, yeah, I just put 1 and 1 outside. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That means you know that a plus b power 6, right? Okay. Sorry, this has 6 terms. Huh? There are 6 terms. For a plus b power 6, huh, you should have 7 terms. Okay? 1 plus 5, you put 6. 5 plus 10, you put 15. 10 plus 10, you put 20. 10 plus 5, give you 15. 5 plus 1 gives you 6. Okay, huh? so this is like a fun fact. Huh? You see that it actually, if I take the two numbers on the top, if I triangulate it down, I get a number at the bottom. Okay? And the two ends are just 1. Huh? A power 6, B power 6. Okay, huh? so it's actually a very, very nice uh, symmetrical uh, triangle. And you can see that the two terms triangulate to give you 1. Okay, huh? so, so how, I mean, you can actually use this huh, to do what we call the to find the coefficients of say a plus b power six, right? So this is a very fun way, okay? But you, you don't worry, it's just for you to understand, okay? Yeah? Okay, so binomial, like I said, it basically is an algebraic expression of the sum of difference of two terms, bi, uh, binomial, two terms, okay? Huh? And this Pascal triangle is to let you see the relationship from pattern to pattern, right? Power one, power two, power three, power four, okay? Yeah? But of course, if I ask you to I cannot expect you to do power 20, right? Because you will draw the Pascal triangle until you, the cow come home, so you cannot finish. So this is uh, up to uh, power 20, okay? So cannot. Okay, next one. So you know that the, the Pascal triangle is useful. It becomes difficult to find the coefficient as n increases. Agree or not? By the time if I ask you to do power 20, you need to draw a pyramid with 20 layers, but you'll feel quite sad, right? Okay, so a more effective method is necessary, which we call the binomial theorem. Okay, but before we get to that, uh, I need to introduce to you a few notations. Uh. Okay, the first one is called n factorial. n factorial basically uh, refers to uh, n factorial. Okay, it's read as n factorial. And the product of decreasing numbers from n to 1. What does it mean? Product means times. Decreasing numbers means you will be n, then n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, all the way to 1. Okay, so if you look at this question, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, ma? So the number itself multiplied by the next number which decreased by 1. Multiplied by the next number which decreased by 1. Multiply by the next number which decreased by 1. So it's basically the number itself, right? Multiply all the way until 1. But each time you multiply, you minus off the term by 1. Okay, huh? so it's a very nice number. And n factorial is basically n times n minus 1, n minus 2, 3 times 2, 1. Okay, can I, a physical interpretation uh, is something like this. N factorial is also the number of ways to arrange n distinct objects in a row. Okay, uh, why, why do I say this? It's something like that. Today, if you have uh, five friends, uh, if you have five friends, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. For example, you, you have six people, six friends, uh, and your friends are maybe A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, uh, 
six distinct objects, uh, six distinct friends. Uh, okay. You want to put them in a row uh, so you can see I put them in a row. Okay. Uh, you realize that how many ways can I fit in the first guy? Okay. It's actually six. I mean, how many people, how many different ways can I have a person sitting in the first chair? You think about it, I have six ways uh, because I have six friends, right? Correct? Six friends. I can put A, B, I can put A, B, C, D, E, or F. Six ways. Suppose I put one in it. Okay. Uh, now I reach the second one. How many ways do you have left? You have five, right? Because one person is already seated here. So now you have five friends left. Right? So when I go to the third one, how many ways? So two people already seated down. You have you are left with so six minus two. You are left with four ways. Right? Because two friends already seated down. So you are basically like left with four ways. Right? Third seat, uh, fourth seat, left with three, three friends. Fifth seat, left with two friends. The last guy, the one that nobody's favorite. Right? Okay, so you can see, uh, sit down. So this, this six factor, I mean, six factorial, right? Okay, uh, it's really like the number of ways to arrange six distinct objects in a row. Okay, uh, we don't talk about circle. We don't talk about if the objects are repeated. Uh, that's meant for senior high. Uh, okay, uh, so, but now uh, you can see six factorial basically is the number of ways to arrange six distinct objects in a row. As you can see from my example here, six ways to go into the first one, five ways to go into the second one, four ways, three ways, two ways, one way, and uh, the, it will be by a product. It will be by a product because the number of combination, right? The number of combination will cause you to have a multiplication. Okay, if you're still not sure about this, do check with your tutor. Lah, oh? Okay, so I actually can, I can uh, to make this video short and sweet, I won't go into details. Okay, but do check with your tutor. All right. So next one, how do I, uh, main thing, uh, how do I evaluate? Hey, is it a hang? Let me check. Huh? Okay, uh, okay, good. Okay, how do I evaluate? How do I evaluate five factorial? Okay, so very easily, if you look at five factorial, right? Okay, so very quickly, just take some time to try this. Huh? Okay, so if you are doing this video now, maybe you want to pause and then you try this, uh, try this uh, question. Okay, so I assume that you pause and after that, I'm going to, just going to show you the solutions. Okay, if I ask you to evaluate five factorial, okay, you can see that it's just five times four times three times two times one. Ten factorial, uh, ten times nine times eight, all in one. Okay, n factorial, basically, uh, I can say that this is n times n minus one times n minus two factorial, right? Okay, so for example, if, what, what do I mean? So for example, if I give you seven factorial, this is like seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. So this portion here, right, is like five factorial, right? So because it's five factorial, I mean, I can say that in general, if I have n, n can be seen as n times n minus one times n minus two factorial. Lah. Okay, huh? so I hope you're comfortable with this stage, which is why I wrote n, uh, n factorial as n times n minus one times n minus two factorial, okay? So why do I do that? Well, you we can see that if I do that, I can cancel straight away. I have n times n minus one. Okay. Mm. So the next portion, okay, what is n factorial over n minus r factorial? So it's a bit uh, challenging uh, because you are dealing with unknown. Um, n minus n, n factorial, I can see again as n, n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, until the point where I have n minus r plus one. What, what is this? This is actually something like n, n minus one. Okay, so this is one, uh, n minus two, this is two, uh, all the way to n minus so-called r minus one. Okay, so after that, I mean, you can see that I'm doing a plus. From here to here, you can see a plus one, plus one. Then here to here, you can see a plus one, n minus r. What do I mean by plus one is I'm saying that you can see the terms are increasing. One, two, R minus one followed by R. There's a plus R. Okay, I hope you can see the pattern. Okay, n n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, n minus four, n minus five. Okay, and factorial. So I'm just going to truncate this part. So over denominator, this is n minus R factorial. You can see that n minus bracket R minus one is the same as n minus R plus one. So your this term is the same as this. In case you are confused, huh? They are actually the same n minus r because I open the bracket. So this is the same as n minus so-called r minus one. Okay. And I hope you can see that when, when, when n factorial 
you can see this n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 all the way and, and the terms the numbers here are increasing 1 2 3 4 so you can see 1 2 3 4 r minus 1 and plus 1 and give me r factorial okay so that is n factorial for you and i can easily cancel out my terms okay this is a strategy you you be good if you know how to play this now okay yeah? and why am i left with this is my answer lor. so i'm left with this as my answer okay so this is basically equals to, to this okay so far okay i hope hope you all are, are comfortable with this okay also if you're not comfortable to do replay the video is it possible to calculate factorial from the 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 calculator is possible as well so if i use my calculator let me just show you here so if you look at my calculator okay okay so the factorial notation is here the factorial notation is here okay so for example if i want to calculate five factorial five factorial you can see i just press equal uh, the answer here is 120. so factorial basically this portion number over here okay i'm using a casio you have a different calculator uh, sorry i don't have the other model maybe you just check with your tutor okay can okay. so i'll just go to the next one okay so thinking time how do we write down the relationship between uh, n factorial and n minus 1 as you have seen just now by this strategy uh, i can always pull out the first number the first term and i truncate the rest and put them as a factorial okay uh? so example 5 again uh, 5 is the same as 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 this portion can be written as 4 factorial which is why i can write it this way okay so uh, what is zero factorial? I mean, zero factorial, it, it seems like it's a very uh, abstract thing, right? But actually zero factorial, right? Uh, I can show it to you. If, if, if based on this theory, right? Uh, if I put n as one, then it can be the same as one times one minus one, which is zero factorial, right? Okay. And one factorial is just one, uh, and there's no, no value about it, because one multiplied by itself. You can see that eh, if I divide by one on both sides, uh, zero factorial is also one way. Okay, uh, what does it mean? Uh, I mean, in terms of uh, PNC, it's like there's basically only one way to arrange none of the objects in a row. Ma. That you don't arrange, no? correct? How many ways can I arrange the objects in a row if I don't arrange? There's only one way. That you don't put your friends, you don't let all your friends sit on the chair, right? There's only one way. That's why you can see zero factorial is like one. Okay? Oh, hmm. Okay, so the next one I want to introduce to you is called n choose r. What does n choose r? n choose r basically is like the number of ways to choose r dist objects from n distinct objects. It's the number of way to choose r objects from n distinct objects. Okay, example, huh? for example, today, right, if you have uh, five friends, you want to choose two uh, to do, maybe go to the canteen and take food with you. Okay, how many ways are there to do that? The answer is actually five choose two. Okay, the answer is actually five choose two. What, what do I mean? Okay, so for example, you have a. You will find that this answer, if you use the calculator, is equals to ten. So let me give you an example. A, B, C, D, E. What do I mean by five choose two? Okay, maybe A, B, C, D. How many ways are there? How many ways to choose? How many? Are oh, you my spelling? How many ways? to choose two objects from five distinct objects. If I were to list them out, I think it is possible. Huh? Okay, so of course, one of the way is I can choose AB. I can choose BC. Order doesn't matter. So AB and BA is the same, okay? So AB, uh, if I can choose AB, I can choose AC, AD, AE. I can choose BC, BD, BE. I can choose CD, CE. I can choose DE. You can see that all in all, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And 5 choose 2 is equal to 10. Okay, no? beautiful or not? So 5 choose 2 basically is how many ways can I choose 2 items from 5 distinct items? Okay, so that's the meaning of 5 choose 2. And that's the meaning of N choose R as well. It's the number of ways to choose R objects from n distinct objects. Okay, ma? Can I? 
Yeah, so I hope you, you get the, the idea. Okay, so basically, n choose r has its own uh, definition. It's basically, uh, you can see as n factorial divided by r factorial over n minus r factorial. Okay, you can find this in the calculator as well. But sometimes in your question, right, not both are numbers, right? Sometimes it can be an unknown. So do remember the definition. You definitely need it. Okay, it's n factorial over r factorial over n minus r factorial. So for example, if I give you something like say a uh, seven choose three, uh, like in this case, uh, this will be the same as seven factorial over three factorial over seven minus three factorial. Okay, where, where so-called, uh, this is my n, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, this is my n, this is my r, this is n, this is n, this is r, this is r. Okay, huh? I hope you can see the how I, I shadow the formula into this question. n choose r is n factorial over r factorial n minus r factorial. Okay, can? Yeah, so that's the idea of this question. Okay, so that is n choose r. Okay, that's the meaning of n choose r. Okay, so uh, how, how do I do question? I think this one is, is, is quite straightforward. I think you can work it out yourself. Uh, I won't go through in a very, very detailed manner. So I, I will just write down. Five choose three. Uh, let me just go out a while. Uh. Five choose three. If all goes well, your answer should be 10. 10 choose four, your answer should be 210. Okay, huh? So uh, can I use the calculator to find? Yes, you can. Can you teach me? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, so very simple. Okay, how do I use the calculator to find uh, choose? Okay, so the choose button is actually here. The choose button is actually here. You can see it's n choose R on the chart. So for example, if I want to do five choose two, right? Your choose is the yellow button. So make sure you press the shift. Oh God. Yeah. Shift. Can I press the shift? Ah, choose. You can see there's a choose button come up. And you press two. So it's really the, the word C stands for choose, huh? And you get the answer 10. Okay, you get the answer 10. Okay, one more time. Five, choose two. You get the answer 10. Okay. Can okay. Huh? So just I'll show you how to use the calculator to get your n choose r. Okay, I also show you what is the formula or the breakdown for n choose r and what's the meaning behind it. It means like r ways to choose from n distinct objects. Okay, so yeah, that is all for part one. Okay, so when we're uh, looking forward to part two, we're going to use the binomial theorem. So Stay tuned and we'll see you in part two. Okay, thank you.